Hello, Bame Farm fans. It's the middle of hay season. It's July 10th. Still really early, actually, because this year, at this point, we were still planting beans. As you saw in the last video, we put in the last of the uh, double crop beans, the only double crop beans, only 12 acres after the wheat. Oh, but we got uh, some mid-season maintenance we got to do on the mower, especially, this is a big one. Let's look close here. We got to start at the very front of the machine. Very important, we gotta keep it attached to the tractor. So let's look at the hitch. That's not straight. That looks kinda worn maybe. Look at that hole. Yeah, that's a little oval out. Now let's compare to our less abused hitch. The top there looks straight, a lot more material compared to that. So this poor mower has been drug across the countryside, I guess. But uh, give it some grease, give it some oil, replace real tines, and it's ready to roll. Keep it greased. Unfortunately, it slept outside the last few nights. Um, we're actually going pretty good on rain. We're sort of dry right now. We had just had a third of an inch. We're doing good. So we're going to grab the handy dandy impact. Oh, I don't know what setting we're on, but hopefully it's enough. This is the new brushless impact. Okay, now let's really check that out. Oh man, we're on one. We're on like baby settings. Let's come down here. Oh, that's a nice easy touch. Don't have to push the button too hard. We're on full blast. Let's break these suckers off. Lovely. Now what I love about the brushless, I let off the trigger, it stops. Our old one, had brushes and it the brushes went bad luckily my uh, uncle john was able to put new brushes in it thank you we'll see that uh, back here in the future for more fix-it jobs uh but when you let off the trigger on the an antique brush models the socket would keep spinning and i would not be able to do something as such where i just stopped and left the nut on the end because sometimes the nut will get stuck in the end of the socket so we got a couple more of these to quick buzz off here. Oh, we're done. And that's the other thing, is that I've noticed about the impact that when you see it kind of stop there after it had, you know, you hear the ugga duggas. This one must be able to load sense and it will kind of stop and hesitate when there's no load on it especially when loosening. And it'll do the same thing when tightening, is it? There's different tightness settings. That when there's no load, it behaves differently than when there's a load on it. Save our lock washers, pop these out, yada yada, we'll get back to you. Magical moment time. One bolt left, Let's see if we can pop that out. Oh. That fell out better than I expected. Time for the new one. By new, I mean new to the machine. The paint doesn't match. Oh, that'll be lovely. It'll be noticeable that we've had to fix this. Oh yeah, hardest bolt, the first one. Might as well put a washer and a nut. Yeah, I can't tell you how many acres this thing's been over. But I figure for the past few years, since I've been farming more out of, since, uh, you know, I got out of college and stuff, I figured it's been covering at least 50 acres once and some of that more than once. Just mowing grass. And, you know, these hay fields aren't, uh, aren't the smoothest. In fact, um, I mean, not that they're not smooth, but they just, keep finding me. Now we gotta look in here real carefully. I don't know how I can squeeze my hand in. Oh, that's a challenge. Who did this? Come on guys, how do I get my hand in there? These are my fingers. We're gonna try the second setting as we tighten these. Got all the bolts in. Here goes nothing. Good thing these are carriage bolts. Don't have to hold them. I can do this one-handed. 
I'd say two setting is pretty tight. I wouldn't do one. One might be for, say, mm, oh, quarter, five sixteenths, three eighths bolts, and these are these are half inch. I hope they could take whatever the two setting has to offer for torque. That PTO shaft gets in the way. So yes, I was talking about uh, how hay just seems to find me, and of course, you know, they're not the smoothest fields, but most hay is good hay. Usually I say more hay is good hay, uh, as long as it's not too weedy. So the hitch is on, what else do we have to do? Well, let's keep watching and find out. We have to deal with some rake teeth. Got a box of some new ones. Went with the expensive dealer ones because we were at the dealer. Yeah, 11 bucks a piece or something for these. They better last and hold on for a while. We Looks like, unless they've changed style, these are all round and the rubber on this one is more squarular. So hopefully it lasts longer, but we've broken uh, that one, some there. I mean, it's, let's not look too closely. There's a bunch missing. Raking the wheat that we mowed after chopping for silage. Oh, hey, there's a silage chopper. Raking that wheat really took a toll on this because I shaved the stubble off at the ground and then trying to be able to pick it all up since the stubble was, you know, really about that long, eight to 10 inches. I was trying to make sure we got it all. It was worse than wrecking second cut. So we lost some teeth, we're gonna replace them all. And that way we can hopefully get most of the hay off the ground with this thing. the darkness and we gotta do something with the sickle which I can't demonstrate very easily where we're at down here is it's so tight give us a second oh come on you can do it we're almost there right Oh, maybe not. I'll get my wrench in, this would go much better. I thought it was on. Oh boy. Hopefully we didn't round that off. No, then why won't you go on? Yeah, we gotta take the sickle bar out and put a new bushing in the end of it. Yep, we're on loosen. Full power Ugga Dugga. And it just quit on me. When I say just quit, it, uh, it sensed the need for power and kindly refrained from exerting too much. Okay, there's our bolt. I broke that. A couple weeks ago, I think I broke it. There's our nut wedged in the wrench because this bushing is starting to get loose. And as a friendly neighbor tells me, this stuff doesn't break sitting in a shed over winter. So before this totally goes out, we have more of a mess. I'm gonna try to be proactive here mid season. Oh, pull this out, cut off a finger or two. another thing I like to look at. Now we just replaced a bunch of these, but since it's out again, 
I'll go through and check all the serrations. This one's missing the tip, but the it's still sharp. So I'll be stingy with blades, and usually before second cut, I'll go through and really replace all of these. These are nice having the nuts. Ooh, that one's coming loose. Mmm, that's not good. That is not good at all. Glad, uh, yeah, that is very bad. Oh, good thing we had to take this loose. We'll tighten that up, and we'll dig in here and replace this guy. Now, of, of all the things on the farm, the 1086 usually has the most stocked toolbox. The combine will have a very stocked toolbox come season, but the haybine always has a good selection. We got a couple extra blades, vice grip. There's a gear wrench, 1516 socket, in case I have to do this in the field. I've even got a six-sided mini socket here to tighten or loosen, in our case tighten, because these came loose, which, ooh, that's not good. That's kind of scary, glad we, uh, glad we caught this. But yeah, six-sided because these little nuts are starting to wear off. And I, you know what? I bet that one's not tight. Oh boy. Man, could have been a bad day tomorrow if I hadn't pulled this thing out. We're just gonna go right down the line and check a bunch of these. Give them just a little bit more. Man, I'm finding somebody not tighten these. Ugh. Gee, so we're lucky the whole bar didn't just flop off. I mean, there's because there's extra bolts that hold the head on the bar on these first six knives. This is a lovely little 916 bolt here on the end. Okay, pop this guy right out. Ooh, we're gonna have to use our adjustable hammer. Voila, things we gotta watch out for. Make sure we uh, get that grease hole lined up. And how are we gonna know when we're lined up? Well, that's all greasy. Let's get the new one. Now, I'm gonna try to demonstrate. No, I can't, but I can see the play in it. And it doesn't take much. Maybe I'll throw this in the toolbox for safekeeping and if I somehow can manage to blow one of these out. But the new one is much, much tighter. We don't want any play, because when you get play, you get slap. Nobody likes getting slapped. So this one, the new one, has a grease hole and a grease hole. And conveniently enough, these are the same ones that they use for the combines. I don't know how we uh, guess how high is too high. I guess we'll set it sort of in the middle. If anything, it will tighten higher. It'll be pulled up because, oh, come on, grease, hold it. It'll be tightened higher because of its positioning with the wobble box. So these are really quick to change out. I mean, I gotta pull the whole sickle out. And if you keep it well greased, it'll go really fast. Hmm. Ooh, that's a lot of ugga duggas. I'm sure that's plenty tight. Oh yeah, that might be... Well, it's not gonna fall apart. That's the key word, because these were close. Make it tight. Time to go slide this in the bottom end. Everybody get your finger out of the way. Simple bar incoming. And I hope to keep it sharp enough that it will slice fingers off. Oh, good thing this is only seven foot, not a 39 and a half foot pole. Here 
impact at the ready. I wonder about the placement because the whole sickle moves up and down to meet the bottom of the arm here. It's really hard to get in there to tighten that. So we're just going to go with a middle setting on our bushing. And because I said so. Three yaga dugas ought to be enough. Tighten. Sounds like we hit bottom. Oh, and of course my wrench is stuck. Good job, everybody. It's tight.